Welcome back everyone. Thanks a lot for coming back. Thanks a lot for sticking with me, especially now with this uh, bit of a dry spell. Um, I'm doing an intro to my intro, kind of, because what happened is I've been so busy with uh, my daughter's basketball and just other stuff that unfortunately I haven't gotten down here. And I shot an intro to a video and I shot it right after Christmas. It's now January like 23rd and it's almost literally a month later and I this is the first time I've had an opportunity to get down here and do anything so if the intro coming up doesn't make sense or you know kinda doesn't fit the timing anymore well that's why so uh, without further ado let's get into the actual intro to the video welcome back everyone thanks a lot for coming back thanks a lot for subscribing um, and if you just discovered the channel thanks for checking me out I uh, hope everyone had a happy holidays and uh, depending on when this is posted either had a happy new year or is having a happy new year or a happy new year is starting off great. Either way I hope it was happy. Um, I hope Santa brought uh, some things for your trains if that's what you're hoping for. I know I personally uh, kind of didn't get anything model railroad related but uh, after a trip to uh, Europe and and all that kind of stuff there's not much I could ask for or hope for um, honestly I've got enough model railroad stuff to keep me uh, occupied for quite a while and in, in everyday life I've got you know everything a man could want so can't ask for much more honestly um, but in terms of model railroad stuff I got a lot of great feedback on building two of the shingles plant and as I mentioned uh, Dan Blink on my first video commented that Wisconsin Central actually served a 3M shingles plant up in Wausau. And then a uh, user, I'm going to check this real quick, uh, Dixon Robertson actually reminded me uh, by putting a link on, my, on the comment section about a website um, called, well it's WC2, the number 2, scale.org. And uh, it's exactly what you think it is. It's Wisconsin Central to scale. And, you know, it's one of those sites that I find and I bookmark and I think, yeah, I'm going to use that all the time in reference. And then I completely forget about it. That's exactly what I did. I actually had the overall web page bookmarked. And then Dixon's um, reminder uh, was like, hey, Dunn's. You should be using this. It's dedicated to Wisconsin Central. It's what you're modeling. Why aren't you using it? Um, so, but following Dixon's advice, I went to the site, and sure enough, he links. He his links took me right to some more shots of the 3M shingles plant, and that was a huge help. Um, hopefully, that's going to kind of set the direction uh, for building three here, because building three, in my opinion, is going to be a little bit more industrial in terms of smokestacks and piping and stuff like that. Now, we'll see how far I can take this with the allotted time I've got here and the video I'm going to shoot. Um, this might become part 3A and then part 3B and so on and so forth. Um, I want to definitely get something up and I have a feeling that if I really want to get as detailed as this plant is, it's going to take a lot of, a lot of time. Um, just in setting things up, getting things cut, painted, so on and so forth. Um, we've been blessed with some great weather here in Wisconsin, depending on how you look at it. Um, it today, for example, it's 50 degrees out, so I went out for a bike ride. And I'm not going to turn down a 50 degree day on December 26th. I know that's disappointing to a lot of people. We'd all love to have snow and have had a white Christmas, but unfortunately it wasn't meant to be this year. So. Uh, long and the short of it, the good news there is that I can get outside and I can paint things. I like to use my spray cans um, outside because they are organic based and not um, in an air, or, um, acrylic. Um, so obviously I don't want to be spraying those inside. So um, I've got a few ideas and I think uh, if you reference the site you'll kind of get an idea of what I'm going for. I've got some leftover smokestacks, I've got a leftover building from the power plant. Um, the only thing I will say is I'm a little disappointed. I'm trying to decide if I'm going to deviate from the real plant to include the Medusa cement towers uh, for the aggregates because if you look at the plant itself they really don't have holding tanks. Maybe inside the building that, they, that you can see 
our tanks or the cylinders, but externally it looks just like another corrugated building. On the flip side of it, that might actually be a neat modeling opportunity because it's quite a tall structure and um, I just don't have a lot of corrugated material left at the moment, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. I might do a combination here and do a larger, taller, a larger corrugated structure and then maybe a few silos, um, modeler's license and things like that. So, so we'll see. Uh, we'll, I kind of, as it develops, I'm kind of loosely modeling all of this as it is. I'm not really following it exactly, so I think if I deviate, you know, it's my railroad. <laughs> so so let's uh, flip over and I'll start showing you guys the pieces that I have and what I plan to use and we'll go from there. So here's the uh, WC2 scale website as you can see and uh, here's just a shot of the, well as you can see the chemical unloading area um, which is a great reference. Um, you know, so here like I was saying so you had the front loadout track and you can see there's really no, I mean here there's kind of a tower, uh, a concrete silo possibly, uh, but overall it's a corrugated structure. It's really not a you know, concrete silo like I was hoping to do. Um, but again here's another view and you can see here there's more of this, it's just a, a really tall building almost as if the silos are enclosed or maybe there's containers within that building. Um, What's really great though, as you can see here, um, and this is something um, that uh, Dan Blink mentioned, is the, the series of cars that were used uh, Wisconsin, by Wisconsin Central to deliver the aggregates um, was these uh, two bay covered hoppers, which I actually have a whole bunch of, which is really great, because um, they'll fit right in with this industry. Um, but again, so the, the loadout tracks and, you know, it would be a really neat structure to build if I had more room to actually make it a little bit deeper uh, instead of a background structure. Um, however, I mean, you can see there's, you know, obviously either a, a walkway or a conveyor system here be to go between the two buildings. Um, you know, so a lot of just neat um, industrial parts of this place. Uh, again, here's uh, some smokestacks in the background. Um, you know, it looks like some bins of some sort here. Um, you know, so just overall a really neat structure. Uh, so I think I'm going to try and see what I can do here with what I've got and get as close as I can. Um, again, I, I'm going to have to take some modeler's license. I'm, I'm working within what I've got here and, and kind of trying to stay within uh, a budget now. Um, so, but that's the reference as I think we're going to work with. All right, so uh, yeah, and just for the uh, the astute listeners, as I was shooting the reference footage on the or the pictures, you may have heard a car derail. I have a tank car that keeps giving me trouble, so I've got the trains running, but they're adding a little bit of more frustration right now than they are adding relaxation. I got to get that tank car fine tuned, so we'll see if I got it or not. Um, so this is the elevated one, well, like on you know, stilts almost. Um, building that came with the um, electrical plant that I turned into the quad graphics plant. And this kind of looks like one of the buildings in the background uh, in the picture. So what I'm thinking about doing is maybe cutting a portion of it off, um, you know, and then just making it a background structure, partially elevated. Um, I can spray paint it. So then I've got these I didn't figure out the paint car, it's still derailed. Um, and then I've got these, uh, I think these came with the paper mill building that I bought. Uh, didn't use them. Um, I painted the tips red and I'm going to leave them just because I kind of like how that turned out. Um, but uh, I can work these in. Um, I noticed that in the um, pictures, the a lot of them had uh, like a walkway around them. Not sure I'm going to be able to do that, but uh, maybe with some styrene and some brass rod I can turn these into uh, railings around them. Um, unfortunately I don't have any uh, brass rod at the moment, so I'm going to have to get some if I plan to do that. The other thing I've got is a couple of wall structures or wall pieces left over from uh, 
the Walther's ADM um, tower or plant um, that I used, uh, the grain tower project. Um, I'm going to see if I can't maybe uh, apply some siding. I have a little bit of siding left over um, just in, in styrene and um, maybe I can use this in conjunction with this to create that larger um, styrene structure or the uh, corrugated structure that you saw in the pictures. Uh, so we'll see if what I can do with, with this. I, I have a feeling I might be taking a trip to the hobby shop to get more corrugated material. And then uh, last but not least I've got the Walther's uh, Medusa cement plant and like I said it almost looks like there are a couple of silos sticking out in areas but what I think I might do is is make a larger like I said make a larger structure and then just uh, a few um, towers um, kind of around the area to show that there are aggregates maybe some of them are enclosed some of them are inside the building again a little bit of modeler's license the good thing about this kit will be that um, it's got quite a bit of uh, you know just you know some of these pieces here you know like the this is uh, probably the elevator to get the material up to the top of the building so I'll be able to utilize things like that it's got uh, you know these structures here you know the distribution system for up on top um, you know so I might be able to utilize some of this to get that industrial piping look and then of course um, and I, I know that someone made this comment on one of my videos previously is um, you know that even the sprues that that these come on can be trimmed and cut and turned into piping um, so you know it's all usable in the end so so just uh, kind of brainstorming a little bit here this is what I was thinking um, you know these two buildings here I think I'm gonna lop the tops off there that can become the side I'll make it a little bit deeper uh, but I can corrugate those and then I'll put two silos off to the side there I'll put an unloading area they have like an awning that looked like it came out over the top and that must have the apparatus for um, you know covering the unloading area as well as the unloading um, machines for lack of a better term um, and then uh, possibly some smokestacks off on the side there and then there can be some piping running in between and then uh, over here is this elevated structure um, we'll repaint that and then off to the side here in this last open area where these tank cars can go I think I'll just make um, it look like they just had again a corrugated structure um, to appear there as as the chemical unloading section very compressed obviously when you look at the structure on google maps uh satellite view it's a huge plant um i mean this whole four by eight sheet uh in this area probably could be that entire plant um but uh given the space that i have this is going to have to kind of do selective compression i guess all right so getting started on uh lopping the tops off of these guys I'm um, just going to use my razor saw and I kind of lined up you know these two flat pieces with the blade and normally you could just use the exacto and sometimes if you get a straight line started um, you can come back using the underside and just score it and just keep doing it this way um, but the blade will stray from time to time so what I find sometimes it's easier just to use a straight edge razor like this and uh, and again um, you know, once you get to a certain point, you can just snap it and then uh, clean it up with sanding stick. In case you're wondering, in the background there is a uh, the train that I'm running. It's actually not the train that was giving me trouble, but I did discover what the problem was. It was actually a turnout that uh, it was catching on the point of it, so I resoldered that, filed it a little bit, and so far so good. Well. I'm uh, kind of on a bit of a budget, but also kind of experimenting. And uh, it's the old Seinfeld episode of, you want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. So, I've seen some videos on using styrene to create the illusion of metal siding. But then I got to thinking, I've got some aluminum foil at my disposal. I've got 
some scraps left over from the last building I made. What if I just went ahead and tried to basically press my own siding? And I know this is a little bit jumping ahead here, but what I went ahead and did was I took these two pieces, I measured out, and I kind of just arbitrarily did this, uh, took my scale rule, and I actually watched a video that Modeler Man Mike did of the Walther's um, coal, um, oh shoot, it was a, uh, was a coal facility. <laughs> I'm I am completely blanking right now. Um, but uh, anyway, he, he ended up scribing lines, and when, when he was doing the scribes, he said that the sheets were about nine feet uh, long and about four feet wide. So kind of like a four by eight sheet. Um, so I made those, uh, I made them about 10 feet um, long, and they're just about five, yeah, they're closer to six feet wide. But I looked at the 3M plant and the, the sheets that are there. It's, it's tough to scale because there's nothing really easy to scale to. But anyway, I went ahead and cut some aluminum foil to length and went ahead and pressed it in between two sheets. And the thing I noticed about this Plastruck stuff, which is what I'm using, uh, there actually is two different sides to this and uh, the grooves fit together a little bit better on one side versus the other. So I uh, laid them in as straight as I could, laid the two pieces over the top of each other, made sure that the grooves were kind of in place, kind of did the, um, what were those dry transfers you used to play with, um, shrinky dinks. Um, and then uh, we'll see how this turns out. Lo and behold, we got a piece of siding. Now, this is, I, I wish um, all I had in the house at the moment was some thinner aluminum foil. I like, kind of wish I had a heavy duty, because um, this stuff does bend pretty easy, uh, which on the flip side uh, is okay, because uh, just slide it into place. And if the edges bend or curl, that's kind of what happens to this stuff anyway. So this is really shiny. So I'm going to experiment a little bit with this and see what happens. My plan is to go ahead and cut a whole bunch of these. I'm not going to record that. I'm not even going to time lapse it because that's just going to be a long process. I'm kind of dreading it myself. Um, I'm going to glue them into place and then give them a, a base coat, um, a light dusting, hopefully maybe of a a gray or you know something to tone them down a little bit and then uh, I can come back and and brush on some weathering powders and, and hopefully these cracks will create the not just the illusion but the actual effect of having multiple sheets and the nice thing is is that the way these are going to lay up is I can cut them uh, slightly different lengths and what I can do when I actually glue them in place will be to use the rule um, to measure out 10 feet, put one down and then put the next one starting there. So if they're a little bit long, it'll get buried anyway. Not too big a deal. So we'll see. If I like the way that looks, I might come back and side this entire building uh, as well. We'll see. It's, uh, it's an experiment and uh, I'll show you the results uh, depending on how things go. If, if it really fails, and, and just go south, well, then I'm going to break down and just go buy some uh, styrene from the hobby shop. But I thought I'd give this a try just to see, taking it to that next level. Like I said, you want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. Okay, so I thought I'd share this little tidbit here. Um, what I'm doing, uh, instead of cutting the aluminum foil, I'm measuring it out with my scale rule here. Yeah, to seven feet, I'm just putting a little tick mark there. And I'm trying to keep, I actually uh, used a rolling pin on this to try and get it as flat as I could, uh, just to get the major um, kinks out and stuff like that. So then I'm taking uh, just a sharpened pencil and uh, connecting the two dots here. And then drawing several scribe lines. And I'm using the edge of the pencil so that way it doesn't dig in and, and tear the aluminum foil 
um, but it's leaving a nice indentation. And it helps to use a sharp pencil, that way you always get the uh, a nice crisp line. So it's obviously not going to cut it, but now I can just take it and with the ruler held down, it tears, but it's it's a nice straight edge. So here you can see I don't have to cut it. I tried an X-Acto and even with the sharp X-Acto at times it would grab and I would end up getting a torn edge. And uh, well, although this edge is a little uneven, it's, uh, it's working pretty well. So I'm going to continue to keep doing that. It's making cutting these strips a little bit easier. And uh, so I guess you could say the pen is, the pencil is mightier than the aluminum. Well that method worked pretty well, so now I've got a whole bunch of strips of uh, about seven feet wide. Uh, a little bit wider I think than they should be, but well, we're gonna go with it. So now what I've done is on my uh, work surface here, I've marked a spot and then another spot for 10 foot sections. So I'm gonna go ahead and just align my scale rule up again. go. There's another one. Now that I've got several of these cut, I'm going to go ahead and put them in my forming jig, if you will. I've marked the styrene here so I know what the, the better grooves are and the, the markings just indicate that those should be made it together. There we go. Some pieces of siding ready to go. Now a few hundred more of these. We all set. Alright, well here's the uh, the building sided and so far I'm pretty happy with it, however there's a few things I noticed, and I don't know if they're going to show up on camera or not, but um, for anybody that watches CSI, they'll, they'll often take and put a vapor inside um, a, a, a plexiglass container, and then, or the, the liquid, and I, I actually think that it might be super glue, I'm not positive, however, my aluminum foil kind of picked up the same type of vapors and so actually my fingerprints are all over this and I the funny thing is I didn't touch any of that or at least I didn't think I did when I was working on this and I know I didn't get glue all over the place so as it turns out I'm gonna have to put a coat of paint on this because as it is it's it's not gonna work but that's okay so I'm gonna give this a base coat of gray see how things turn out and then we'll come back and weather it and things like that and go from there well, here's the finished product. Um, trying to get some good light on it so you can see it. I ended up spray painting it with uh, just a Krylon, you know, light gray primer, and that the downside to that is it kind of dulled the detail of the aluminum foil. So a little bit of a, a negative there. I'm a little disappointed with that. However. Um, I think uh, when I dusted it with some AIM weathering products, just uh, a mixture of dirty brown and or black and then rust, and it kind of gives it a well dirt look, and uh, it kind of accentuated the the edges. And because they're actual individual panels, uh, there's shadow lines in there, and I didn't really have to paint those in; they just kind of work their way in. And um, glued the roof on and gave that an aluminum color or you know metal color dusted it with some um, weathering powders as well uh, did the legs uh, an engine black uh, just a just a badger airbrush color I happen to have laying around and uh, then dusted that of course with some weathering weathering powder as well so here it is on the layout uh, you know as you can see I've got all the uh, my plastic over the top since I haven't been able to use the layout lately I like to cover it up uh, keep the dust off of it, but uh, I think the lighting here is a little bit better so you can kind of see it in its in its location um, 
You know, for a first go around, I'm kind of happy with it. I think uh, it'll work well in its location. So the next step will be attempting the larger building and seeing what happens with that. Um, this this small building was a good start, I think, and uh, you know, give us a give me a good idea of of what I can do uh, with something larger. Well, that's it for part three A of the uh, shingles plant. Uh, again, I'm going to apologize, as you can tell by the pre-intro that I shot and then the actual intro. Um, there was quite a large span between when I started and then uh, today. Um, so uh, I'm actually on my way to my daughter's basketball game. Um, so uh, trying to squeeze this in now. But uh, hopefully, as time allows, I'll continue on to the second building. As I mentioned, um, I have uh, some thicker aluminum foil. I bought the like the heavy duty stuff, so it's slightly thicker than the the stuff I use. So I'm going to see if that holds its shape uh, well, but then is also a little bit more durable, and uh, we'll see how that ends up working out. So, thanks so much for sticking with me. I know it's been a little bit of a dry spell. I appreciate everybody's comments on all the videos and all the new subscribers, all the old subscribers. Uh, greatly appreciate it. I hope uh, I hope I can continue to keep. Uh, making videos as time allows and keep posting stuff. So uh, thanks a lot and uh, we'll see you next time.